Hey guys, I decided to come and do a talking video today because I was just thinking and it is five years past my big chop. I big chopped on April 17th, 2012 and now it is July. So I feel like I've never ever ever talked about my transition journey and if I did, I don't remember and it was a long time ago. So I just decided to come and sit in front of the camera today and tell y'all about my transition and if you are curious I actually recorded everything about my hair journey starting with like right after my last relaxer all the way until now so my whole hair journey is up on YouTube for your pleasure just a word of caution my videos back in the day did not have really good quality so You've been warned, but the videos are there for you to look at. My last relaxer was September 2011. I did not record that because I didn't really start recording myself until after. I knew I didn't want to relax my hair, but I just did it just because I listened to peer pressure. So that is my first tip. Like, do not listen to other people. If you feel like you want to go natural, go natural. Don't worry about what everybody else say because those people who are making fun of you are probably going to be the people who wish they would be confident enough to go natural and then they would be asking you for hair tips in the future so if you want to be natural as far as your hair go ahead and do it so after i relaxed it or even while i was doing it i wanted to be natural so i knew that was the last time i was going to put relaxer on my hair like i always had relaxer left over but that last time i just threw it away because i knew i wasn't going to do it again in December is when I first started to really do styles and my first style was a crochet sewing. I have been doing crochet braids since forever and I would tell people that I had crochet braids in my hair and I think that many people had the idea of crochet braids as like those little crinkly micro braids that many of us wore when we were like six or 10 or however old we were but they weren't the cutest little things and so on some people like you could see like the knot or like when you lifted your hair up you could see like the cornrows like they were a mess so I didn't wear those like I wore those when I was a little girl but once I became an adult and I was doing crochet braids it was always with like either really good synthetic hair or human hair so I would just coral all my hair up and then I would just do crochet braids on the outside and then I would sew the wefted hair in the center. Then in January, I did a spiral set with perm rods. Well, it was very, very shrunken, like very shrunken. The curls were really small and tight. And I did my signature style, which is a mohawk. So after the curls loosened up a bit, then I just pulled it all into a mohawk. So I wore that style in January. I did just a regular roller set and I had like some cornrows on the side. I did the bantu knots and I think I might have worn the bantu knots for like a day or so and then when I did the bantu knot out it was a hot mess but I still wore it. In February I feel like I was getting a little frustrated because all of the styles that I was trying were not coming out right because it was really really hard to deal with like my relaxed hair and then my natural hair that was growing. I don't feel like my products that I was using were the right ones that I should have been using at the time and I was getting kind of frustrated so instead of relaxing I did box braids and I wore box braids for about a month when I got tired of wearing them I kind of like took the front out and then I did cornrows at the front after I got tired of that then I um, I curled like spiral curled the end so that it would give it like a new look I normally try to do box braids like at least once a year and I'm feeling like I'm getting like that itch right now to do box braids again so I think I will do some box braids really soon. Towards the end of March I took those box braids out and then I attempted my first braid out which did not come out good at all. Like a lot of my styles didn't really come out the best but I was so excited to be natural that I just you know dealt with it. Then I attempted to do an updo that Miss Dainty One did um, she's natural and she doesn't make videos anymore but do y'all remember her like she's still on Instagram but she's not on YouTube so I feel like a lot of the people who I watched when I decided to go natural are no longer making videos 
um, but I do find them on Instagram. In April, I decided to do a sew-in with most of my hair out. Like I had a really, really, really small amount of leave out and the braiding process tired me out. So I braided my hair in the pattern that I wanted and then I knew I wasn't going to be able to sew it in. So I just gathered like all the cornrows in the back of my head and I wore it in a bun for a couple days until I felt like sewing the hair in. So that is one thing that even now I still do. I don't like taking too much time to do my hair, but the styles that I want to do will often take a lot of time. And so I just find ways throughout the process to stop so that I can wear it as a style. So I'll do a certain part and I'm like, you know what, if I get started, I know I'm not going to finish it. So before I start that step two in the process, I'm just going to wear this as a style. And like nobody ever knows. They always think I meant to do that. Once I felt like sewing my hair in, I sewed it in. My real hair was longer than the hair that I purchased. So I cut my hair to match the same length as the extensions. And some people on YouTube did not like that. Why would you cut your hair? Why would you get hair that was shorter than your hair and then cut it? Like people didn't understand that. But my mindset was I knew I was going to big chop. So it didn't really matter to me to cut my hair because I was going to cut it anyway. That was my last style because in April I did the big chop and I recorded that. <sighs> I remember that I had MJ at that time and MJ was a year old and he was taking a nap. So I went in the restroom and I had previously told my husband that I was going to cut my hair. But I never really said when I was going to do it. And even that day, I think it was a Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it was a Tuesday. I didn't even know I was going to cut it. But I took, I put MJ down for a nap. And then I went in the restroom and I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I did it. I didn't even know how I felt at the time. And I didn't want my husband to like react negatively to me cutting my hair. So I just stayed in the bathroom. I did not come out the bathroom and I was in the bathroom for probably like MJ's nap and then some like probably three four hours and my husband ended up hearing MJ wake up he got him and then like he eventually came into the restroom and he just looked at me and I looked at him and then he was like did you use my clippers to cut your hair and I just looked at him because I was like my hair's not even that short. Like, no, I didn't use your clippers to cut my hair. Like, I really normally never wear makeup, but especially with, like, all of my hair gone and just me, I didn't feel girly at all. And so that day I did put makeup on. And I think I wore makeup a little bit more around this time just because I didn't feel as feminine without my hair. So throughout my transition, curly styles really, really helped me. Whenever you no longer put a chemical in your hair, whether that is color or relaxer or whatever you decide to no longer do with your hair and you're trying to let your hair grow out from the roots, there's going to be a line of demarcation. And that line where your natural hair meets the relaxed hair is very, very brittle. For me, curly styles were the best styles. Curly styles like perm rods, sets, different set straw sets, bantu knots, twist outs, braid outs, styles where you are able to like mask the two textures are probably what's best. That's what really helped me. That's why I did the wet sets and the perm rod sets because that helped me to have the same kind of texture with my hair that was growing out and then the relaxed hair. If you don't want to do that braids weaves i feel like are if done correctly are really good protective styles as well you don't want to have a style where you're going to constantly see the two different textures that's just going to frustrate you it might make you question yourself and be like why am i even doing this why am i going through this but if you're able to mask the two textures or like put your hair completely out of the way where you can't see it i feel like your transition will be easier i remember when i first started to transition even before that like I kind of started watching videos on YouTube and I remember looking at people who had natural hair and like buying all the products that they were using and then trying to use them and I really don't think I should have done that when you have that relaxed hair at the end 
Your hair is different. It reacts different. Your natural hair reacts different because those permed ends are just like hanging there. And a lot of people don't like to say this, but I'm just going to say it. Like when you're transitioning, you're not fully natural. Like you're not natural. So for you to try to do the exact same things that people who are fully natural are, I feel like you're going to have some trouble. And that's what I had. When you have like curly, kinky, coily hair, and then like straight hair at the end, I feel like it's really hard to mimic fully natural style. I used all of those products that other people used and I think that's why my hair turned out a hot mess. I was a product junkie when I was transitioning, but then once I was fully natural, I was like, I'm not using this, I'm just gonna use this, this, and this. But I was so excited initially and I really wanted to be natural and I tried to act like I was natural and I really was not natural so I feel like that kind of messed me up a little bit during my transition also something to remember is that until you are completely 100% natural you won't know what your curl pattern your hair texture you won't know what any of that looks like so I hear so many people saying like you know I'm a 3c and I'm a 3b and all that and some of them you know they're really excited because they feel like they have good hair that's a whole other situation but it shocks them because once they cut the relaxed hair off their hair just shrinks up like it goes from here and it's all wavy and curly and everything with the relaxed hair on it but then they cut those ends off and it goes and then they don't know how to handle it because they were looking at their hair with the relaxed hair at the end thinking that it was some kind of other pattern or texture and it wasn't and if you don't feel like you're ready for that shot and me my hair is like probably mid back or bra strap length and when it's in a wash and go it shrinks up to here like I'm five years in and I feel like I have a TWA a lot of the time so if you don't want to deal with that then it's probably not best for you to big chop you know that's for you personally to decide not for me or anybody else and finally understand that everybody is at a different point in their journey that's their journey in life that's their hair journey whatever journey we're all on different journeys don't compare yourself to me or the person's video who you just watched before me or your co-workers or your schoolmates or even your mama because everybody's head of hair is different no two heads are exactly the same. So just because you see some things on my channel or somebody else's channel and you feel like your hair looks very, very close to the texture and it's going to come out exactly like that, it's probably not. So on this natural hair or transitioning journey or whatever journey you're on, just understand you gotta be patient. There's so many different factors that affect our hair, our growth rate, all of that. And so just, be patient, try not to get frustrated. You will get frustrated because natural hair is crazy, but just like, just understand that, you know, everybody's different. I hope that you liked this video. If you liked any part of it or any part of it made you go, mm-hmm, or yep, yep, anything like that, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Okay, cause like, I need to know that y'all like these videos. Also subscribe if you have not done so already. Make sure the notification bell is turned on. I know everybody says that now and you're not turning it on, but I need you to right now go ahead and click the little button so you're notified whenever I upload a video. Like I like this. I'm kind of thinking about doing like a TWA version of this and like what you should know when you do the big chop or something like that. So let me know if that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching. Let me know if you're interested in me doing a video on anything else. Product reviews are coming up. Hairstyles are coming up. So stay tuned. Thank y'all so much for watching and I hope I help some of you out. Bye.